Okay, so in this last video of a three-part series, I want to combine the concepts of current mirrors and current sources into uh, and diode curves into a final application video where we're going to make a diode temperature sensor. In the diode video in the beginning of this series, we had some exponential curves of the IV characteristic of a regular silicon diode, and we showed that it has an so-called on voltage that actually shifts with temperature. So as we heated this thing up, it uh, the on voltage shifts to, I guess it would be the left. So it was, it was looking like this. And this shift happens to be pretty linear in the, you know, regular temperature range. And so we're actually going to utilize this uh, what, what ends up being about a two millivolt per degree centigrade uh, for most diodes, a two millivolt per degree centigrade shift in this curve. And so what we're going to do is pick a spot on this plot in terms of setting, we're going to set a fixed current going through the diode and then just measure the voltage across it. And so what we're saying is this curve is linearly shifting with temperature. And so by measuring the voltage, we can actually map that to a corresponding temperature. And so the first order of business is setting a constant current, which was the reason that we did all the work to understand those constant current sources. Okay, so the basic idea of this temperature sensor is we're going to have a constant current source through the diode and take this as our signal voltage which is going to end up looking like it's going to have a DC offset component and then a signal component so this is I guess if this is time and VS and this is going to be remembered so at about room temperature this say this is room temperature this is uh, about 0.6 volts for the typical on characteristic of a diode. And so all we're going to do is subtract. We're going we're gonna to build circuitry to subtract the 0.6 volts so that this guy is down here. And then also amplify so that we have, well, I guess we're not going to have ne negative. Uh, we're not going to be able to read negative voltages, but you get the idea. We're going to have... We're going to basically subtract the DC offset and amplify the signal so that we can then put it into, and in this case, this will be, pretend this is way bigger now, and we want to map this small signal oscillating around 0.6 up to, uh, from, to a zero bias signal that spans the 5 volt range, such that we can go to Arduino. Okay, so as you may have guessed, this is going to go into an op amp. And so the signal will go into the non-inverting input. And on the inverting input, we have the normal feedback resistor network, R1, R2. And then we're going to actually put a reference voltage on this pin, and that's going to act as the DC offset. And so I want to just show you, because um, it wasn't obvious to me at first how to get the offset, uh, because this... Typically, I'll, you'll, and you'll see why, this VREF is actually not going to be equal to the 0.6 that we need to subtract from this uh, DC bias, but it's going to be slightly different, and so I'll show you how that works. So all we're going to do is say that the output from inverting, from the in inverting circuit configuration has an output voltage that will be equal to V ref times the gain of the circuit, which in this case is going to be negative R1 over R2 for the inverting case. And then the output non-inverting is, oh, this is going to be V signal. It's going to be V signal 1 plus R1 over R2. And so if the V signal, say V signal is composed of the V offset plus V 
we'll call it AC, the AC temperature signal. Then what we want to do is have the offset. So we want to have it such that so this guy minus V ref R1 over R2 equal to zero. Single out the VAC times one plus R1 over R2 as the only signal that comes out of the op amp. So we're gonna set the V ref to actually cancel this offset. And so what is that gonna look like? We're just, we're just combining the transfer functions here, basically, of the inverting and the non-inverting configuration. Um, so basically, if we just go through and solve this, for, in this case, we want to know what V ref has to be for a known V offset. Uh, so we just solve for V ref is equal to V offset 1 plus R1 over R2 r2 over r1 and that's just equal to v offset uh, solving for it it's going to be just again one plus this time r2 over r1 so you, you can see that when the ratio of uh, r1 to r2 is big this is going to be very small and v off is going to be almost equal to v ref and so in our case we need to see what sort of uh, amplification we need in order to get our signal our desired signal into the 0 to 5 volt range and then we can calculate what we need V ref to be okay so I did some of the boring work ahead of time and found that let's say put degree C here and voltage here we have at 0 degrees Celsius we had a 0.668 reading across this diode uh, for about 2 milliamps of current sorry we should put that in this is about two milliamps here. And at 20, we had about 0.624. So like, I guess, room temperature. And then 100, we had 0.469. So I guess we just have to decide what range we want this to work over. And then you can determine your amplification. So I'll say I want it to work up to, I don't know, we'll say 40 degrees C. We went 44 in this direction uh, to get here, so we'll go 44 in the other direction. So we'll say that 40 degrees is gonna be roughly, um, what is that, 0.580? So ignore this value here. And so I wanna, I wanna get this, uh, I wanna set the range. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be my V off right here. Because I don't need to read any values lower than zero degrees Celsius. And then my maximum value is here. So the total gain is determined by the difference between these guys, right? So let's see, we got 0.668 minus 0.580. And that's about 0.088, I think. And so we want to go, we want to get this guy up to uh, 5 volts, right? So what's 5 divided by this? So say it's, say it's about 50. It's a little bit more than 50, but we'll, we'll call it a gain of, we want a gain of 50. And so now we can find uh, the resistor ratio is gonna be R1 of R2 is 50, uh, roughly 50. I mean, it's, it's really 49 because one plus, for our signal, it's gonna be one plus the gain is equal to the output signal. So if R1 of R2 is 49, then this guy here is 1 49th. And so 1 plus 1 49th is basically 1. And so V ref is basically the same as V offset. So for the sake of simplicity, we're going to say that this is true. That V ref is the same as V offset. So now we know our reference. It's going to be 0.668, the same as our V off. And we know our gain is about 50. Okay, one final thing I forgot to mention is that this V ref is just mysteriously being produced. And so, yeah, we're going to utilize the fact that in the previous video, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's about current mirrors, current sources and current mirrors. Um, but we show that it's, we can make a constant two milliamp current source, but we can also mirror that current and, and put that for other applications in a circuit. Namely, 
if we have the two milliamps from, say this is the first branch and this is the second branch of the current mirror, then for a constant voltage source, we just convert the constant current into a constant voltage by putting a resistor here. Okay, then in order to set, if we want to know RF, then we just have VREF over two milliamps, gives us RF. And I messed up in telling you that VREF was supposed to be, so remember we're going from six, what is it, 668 to 0.580. And so if, if this is, if we want to subtract the DC bias off, then we actually should be subtracting this number because we need our our differential input to still be positive since we're running this LM324 from zero to 10 volts. So we're actually gonna make VREF equal to 0.580. And so if I put that in here, then 0.58 over two milliamps is just 25. And then a four is uh, 290 ohms, is that right? So we'll go ahead and give that a try and practice. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so this is essentially the same circuit as uh, in the previous video. At the end of the previous video, you can see we still have the two current, uh, you know, the current source in the mirror that are running on the off this bottom side of the uh, LM2 LM324N. We've got the diode, uh, ref the Zener diode reference, and uh, so now all I've added is the this uh, diode that we're gonna use as a temperature sensor on one wing of the current source and on the other wing is a resistor pair that's gonna set that uh, reference that we want and those are all going into this other side of the op amp we're just using another quarter of it to do the amplification okay so right now I'm just probing the output of the circuit and let's see if this will stabilize at room temperature for us so remember this is gonna go down in voltage as it gets hotter because the um, yeah, because of the inverse, you know, that minus two millivolts per degree C, the inverse temperature coefficient. So the voltage will decrease as the diode heats up. So it's just about, maybe it's close to stabilizing room temperature. And when I go ahead and squeeze this guy, boom, it drops down rapidly. And so you could of course map this uh, a little bit better you know ideally at room temperature this would be I guess the way we set it up it would be at 2.5 volts so there must be something off in my calibration but uh, you can at this point you have all the tools to map this temperature sensor to whatever range that you want uh, there are some limitations with the actual precision of the diode as a temperature measuring device but uh, yeah I wouldn't recommend using this for really precision I don't, I don't think you could really get this to work for precision temperature measurements, but for a really cheap, quick trick, this is, uh, this is as good as it gets probably. So let's try in the ice water now. You can see this just skyrockets. It was at about, it was at one volt, now it's up at three and a half in this more or less ice water. So again, we calibrated this to be at maximum. Uh, so it should be at five volts for the uh, for frozen water and, and I, it should be a little bit higher since it's this is probably not exactly at zero degrees C but um, Yeah, there is definitely something some more to be desired from our calibration but Yeah, I mean the other way you could do it is just have ice water on hand boiling water on hand or you could calibrate it to another thermometer we have successfully created a temperature sensing device out of a diode and if we wanted, we could go ahead and plug this into an Arduino. You could very, you could very realistically plug this into a, um, you know, in ADC, like an, on an Arduino or some other microcontroller, and actually get this to read temperatures back for you. And this is this is actually pretty common in industry as a cheap way. I, I do believe that in a lot of uh, IC designs, there are. I don't, not necessarily diodes, but junctions of transistors used as temperature uh, measuring and even compensating devices. And um, yeah, band gap references following with temperature are used all over the place as a cheap way to measure temperature in different devices. So this was just kind of ripping the guts out of it and breaking it down for you. So I hope you enjoyed this series and um, yeah, 
like, subscribe, comment, and let me know what you'd like to see next time on Electric Sheep Labs. Thanks.